Hello everyone and welcome to the Cycling Dane YouTube channel or the podcast if you're listening there. Today we are going to be talking about the World Cyclocross Championships that's happening in Hugerheide, the men's elite. And today I'm joined by Patrick from Audu Cycling. And Patrick, yeah, the cyclocross season, it definitely has been exciting. We've had Matthew Van der Poel, Tom Pickcock and uh, Watt Van Aert all firing on small cylinders here. Yeah, it's been a really exciting season. And yeah, Wout Van Aert and Matthew Van der Poel have really been trading punches throughout this season. But there's been a lot of interesting battles going on for the kind of the fight between Lawrence Swake and uh, Michael Van Tornacht, for example. You know, they are really kind of competitive as well, kind of within their own bracket, if you want to say that. You know, Wout Van Aert and Van der Poel are certainly on a different level. And speaking of Pidcock, of course, he won't be here to defend his title from last year, which is which is disappointing for me as a Yorkshireman. I don't know what I'm going to be supporting now. I've just got free reign now. But I think that it will be a very interesting battle going into uh, the Cyclocross World Championships next week. And I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, Patrick, it... It's a shame that, like you said, we're not going to have the defending world champion Tom Pickcock. Obviously, has different aims in terms of the road season, which we're all looking forward to see what the Yorkshireman can do there. But we are running, turning to the Netherlands in Hugerheide, as mentioned, for the first time since 2014. So it's not a completely new destination for riders. And uh, yeah, the winner that edition was one Stenik Stebar, but in the under 23 category, we had Wout Van Aert winning the race. We had Michael Van Turhout on second place and Macho Van Der Poel in third place. So maybe we can see some some version of that uh, that podium, despite Michael Van Turhout unfortunately not being at the Benidorm race because he was ill. But uh, well, that aside, Patrick, if we should focus on the course first, naturally. And uh, yeah, what kind of things stand out for you on the Hugerheide? A cyclocross course. The thing that mainly stands out is that there's there's quite a few sets of staircases, so there's going to be plenty of running going on in this race. Quite a lot of the time, we've seen recently, you know, Van der Poel's been very kind of eager to stay on the bike through things like sand pits and stuff, as opposed to Wout Van Aert, who perhaps runs a bit. So perhaps that might favour Wout Van Aert a bit more, who could favour perhaps the running side a bit more. But I think that's a very small sort of advantage there. But yeah, so those will certainly fatigue the riders throughout that race, you know, having to swap from on bike to off bike quite a lot. And there's these sort of downhill, off camber, muddy banks as well, which look really technical, very difficult to handle. And then we also have a slight drag up to the finish, only a few percent points, but it's certainly quite a distance from the final corner to the actual finish line. So if it is perhaps a two-up sprint between Van der Poel and Wout van Aert, it's going to be a long old sort of, it's going to be a lot of staring at each other up to that finish line. So it's a very varied course, the staircases, the off camera bits, but I think that it's going, to, it's going to provide a really interesting stage for the World Championships. I think it was going to provide a lot of good opportunities for battles to take place. Well, Hugerheide, like you said, very technical finish. I think that's going to be a very interesting uh, thing to watch. And obviously they're doing laps of this course, but the Hugerheide race is also a World Cup event, and we haven't had we didn't have it this year, but last year we had it where Eli is a bit one, and we didn't have Macho Van Der Poel, Wout Van Aert, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the years before that, we have had Macho Van Der Poel win it on three, well, win it in the 2017, 18, 2018, 19, and 2019, 20 seasons and uh in 2017, 2018, I know the riders are very different now, and even. Even he won them, well, I'll just put the graphic up. We can see how many times he's won it, five times in total in six years. And Wat Van Aert has finished second on three occasions behind Macho Van Der Poel. So, Patrick, don't you think that's going to fill uh, Macho Van Der Poel with some confidence, despite what we'll talk about in a bit, the 2023 season? I think you are. And being Dutch. Obviously. Of, of course, it's home field advantage for Macho Van Der Poel. That's got to be you know, a good confidence boost being on his side of the border. I think that, you know, the fans will be going absolutely crazy cheering Van der Poel on. And yeah, the track history of doing well at this course will certainly provide a mental edge, perhaps just a bit of comfort, knowing that he is uh, very successful here, as opposed to 
Wow, an art who perhaps isn't as successful here. Perhaps that's just a small mental advantage which Van der Poel can try and, uh, you know, eke out over Wout van Aert, especially since, like you say, the 2023 season has been perhaps a little bit more towards Wout van Aert, would you say? Well, we have the beautiful stat that we we found courtesy of Cyclocross 24 and Patrick, the 2022-23 season, like you mentioned, is uniquely summed up by this stat. It's the first time... Well, not counting the last season because Machavanapur had a bit of a wobble in terms of form, uh, injury as well, reg- recovery. But like in terms of any other season, it's the, been the first time going into a World Championships in a long time where we see him with a better record head-to-head. Yeah, I think that this is certainly a year where Wout van Aert has has edged it just slightly. And although that could, you know, you could read into that and say, well, therefore... From that, Wout van Aert should be winning here. But it's just they trade punches so much to these two. It's either one of them's winning and the other one's finishing second or it's vice versa. So I think that although Wout van Aert does have the better record this season, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be winning this time around. It's, it's, you know, you can draw trends and stuff, but I think it just depends on how they're going on the day. And as we just said, van der Poel does have a better record on this course specifically. So whether it might go towards Wout van Aert or Van der Poel, it's very difficult to say, I think. But if we just look through that graphic, yeah. the first time they traded blows this season was in Antwerp. That went to Macho van der Poel and Wout van Aert finished second. <laughs> yeah, this is insane. Like they're finishing first or second, apart from Daigum, where I think it was Tom Pickock in the middle of them. But any other time, it's first, second, first, second. And we did have Wout van Aert winning three of them in a row. The Zolder, the Daigem, and the Lutenhout, he won them. Uh, unfortunately for him, he lost his home race of Hetals to Macho van der Poel. That will be annoying for him. Kukscheider, he also, well, Macho van der Poel finished second. And then the one we can draw most from, which maybe not because the Climate is very different here in Benidorm compared to uh, what it will be in Hugerhide. We saw uh, a battle between Macho van der Poel and Wat van Aert where uh, Wat van Aert was arguably forced into the barrier somewhat and his sprint was... We didn't see the full-out sprint from Wat van Aert. So, but it is a very different finish in Hugerhide as well. So do you think maybe we're going to see them come to the final sections together or is it going to be one of them just doing... In managing to break away that like that that's kind of the two scenarios we're used to now yeah it's it's tricky to say because i think there's quite a few sort of long longer stretches on on this course which could provide some more like defensive style racing where somebody's perhaps less willing to go all out and perhaps they're more willing to take it to a sprint, especially since it is quite a long way from that final corner to the finish line. Of course, if you take a look at like road results, for example, Van der Poel is usually very good at two up sprints, especially when there's a bit of cat and mouse going on. So if I, I reckon if it did come to a sprint, perhaps I might favour Van der Poel because of that track record that he has in such scenarios. You know, we've seen that in Flanders the last three years that he's taken it three times out of three from you <coughs> know Casper a... Esco. <laughs> oh yes, sorry. Yeah apart of, well he's but Casper Esco is not doing cyclocross so therefore yeah, he's, he's safe. not gonna be there. He's safe. He's safe isn't he? He's... <laughs> but yeah Van der Poel's just he's really good at these scenarios and but then again, Wout van Aert is also an incredibly strong sprinter. And without that technical kind of corner into the finish line that we saw in Benidorm, a bit more of a straight two-up sprint, it might be more towards Wout van Aert if he can make the sprint a bit more prolonged and drawn out. Because I think van der Poel's a bit quicker off the line. Yeah, and it's uh, more uphill as well than uh, just a flat, solid sprint. And that technical section, like you mentioned as well, could definitely do something. Mm. But uh, enough match van der Poel and Wout van Aert uh, chat. Third place. Where's the third place going? We know Lawrence Sweek, phenomenally effort from him throughout the season, wrapping up the World Cup win. Eli Isabit obviously has won here before. He's the last winner of the Hugerhide World Cup event. Mm-hmm. No match of Anupal Wat Van Aert there, but there was a Tom Pickhook who finished third. So where should we kind of be looking for this third place? Yeah, I think Lawrence Sweet. Really 
Yeah, I know it is, isn't it? But I think you're right. Lawrence Swake, I, I think I am somewhat favouring. I think he's just been so consistent this year. And when you look at the results for this year, he is regularly inside the top five. I think some other riders like Lars van der Haar, for example, is sometimes more between fifth and tenth. Of course, Van Turnhout has actually won some races. Of course, Van der Poel and Van Aert weren't there. But I think it is sort of Swake and, and Van Turnhout, who I am mainly looking at for third place. Is a bit has been somewhat there, like sometimes there, sometimes not. I think it depends how he turns up on the day. But in terms of consistency, I'm really looking at, at Lawrence Swake and um, Michael Van Turnhout for, for third. What do you reckon? Is that, is that fair or is it? Somebody I'm missing. Yeah, I think that's. I think Lawrence Swake has been solid throughout the season, and yeah, he definitely wants to cap off, like you said to me, uh, before we started, cap off his World Cup victory with a podium place at the World Championships. Equally, we could be looking towards our uh, last Vanderhaar as well. I think the third place is more competitive than the first <laughs> two positions if if everything goes to plan. But uh, yeah, that's kind of our talk about the favourites, etc. The course, why not finish with a prediction round, as always? And uh, Patrick, do you think it's going to be Mathieu van der Poel winning a fifth title? Or is it going to be Wat van Aert winning his fourth title? Oh, it's tricky, <laughs> be- uh, it's tricky because it's, uh, you know, wow, it's got a better track record this year, but van der Poel's got a, a better record on this circuit. But I'm I'm gonna go with Wout Van Aert. Third place, do you know what? Just to be different, I'm going to go with just an absolute wild card in the uh, new British champion, Cameron Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Why enough. not? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna say third place, Lawrence Week. I'm gonna be the boring one. <laughs> Second place, Wout Van Aert. First place, Mister Macho Van der Poel. And uh, he's going to get his fifth title. And then he's going to be winning the uh, the road, like the road to world championships later this year. As yeah, course. that would yeah, be epic. He's that winning everything. Epic. It's going to be a match of a wonderful year. It is <laughs> absolutely. I can see it. But uh, with that, that's basically it for this preview of the cyclocross world championships in Hugerhide. Make sure to check out the website write up as well, where we'll uh, do a bit more uh, in depth of each of the favorites. And of course, as always, make sure to check out Patrick's channel, I'll Do Cycling. He's very close to a thousand, so help him out with that. And uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we will see you around.